General Mills Fiber One cereal has been around since the 80s, but it wasn't until about 15 years ago that the company started expanding its Fiber One line to offer breakfast bars, brownies, cookies, and so much more. Doctors say that we should be eating nearly 30 grams of fiber a day, so today the crew will taste three Fiber One snacks to find out the best way to ingest this much-needed carbohydrate. Sit back while we help you get regular and ask, You tried that? You tried that. Fiber One. I'm Nick Norka, that pal's Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Geiger. Hello. You guys feel like you get your. Do you watch your fiber intake? Have you? Is that a something you've ever taken note of i don't i don't watch my any intake my my lunch today was a hot dog fries and four deep fried oreos so (laughs) are you serious yeah (laughs) what in the fuck man all right to be fair i only ate three and a half because the fourth one was like a little burnt so i just tossed that one there's a lot of fiber in that though right Mm. no maybe (laughs) might maybe like fiber in like filings, like iron filings, they fall into the batter <laughs> or something. I'll tell you how much I watch my fiber. I don't even know what like foods have fiber in them, other than these fiber one bars. I know have a bunch. Uh, yeah, like like, like bananas what? have fiber, maybe. Yeah. Um, apples actually have a fair amount of fiber. Mm. Yeah, um, cool. but if you ever like constipated or something, that's a you should eat some of these fiber things. So I mean, you might be you might be shitting your brains out tomorrow. After we eat these snacks. Okay, you so... You eat the whole thing. So you're saying an apple pie a day keeps the messy shits at bay. Is that what you're trying to say? I don't no, know. it gives say. you the messy no, shits. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fiber <laughs> makes you shit. Oh, oh, oh. Also, an apple pie a day will, will put you in the grave. That's, I think, <laughs> the diabetes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me tell you about this, this work email that came this week. There was some debate amongst me and some of my coworkers about... Whether this was a, a good email to get or not. So mm. now I feel I won't tell you my response yet. I'll let you let you go. So there's a guy who's only worked there a couple of months and people come and go. Right. And so sure. most of them don't send all work emails of this variety like <laughs> early into the I feel like this is like the fifth time on the podcast you told a story about somebody sending an all work email. Your company loves doing that. Yeah. All right. So um, he says, I want to thank you. There's a space, each of you, period, another <laughs> space. All right. There's a start. <laughs> I cannot imagine a better fit for me in my first year, and I want to thank you for welcoming me into your community. It's okay. fine. Decent start, right? Yeah. But it's a little bit like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, has has, we- has just a tiny bit of, like, Nigerian Prince scam email vibe to it to start <laughs> off with. <laughs> I need one of you to cash this check. <laughs> Each of you. <laughs> <laughs> I vow to be a positive and compassionate entity in our building. And I promise to show up every single day uh, for each of you. (laughs) Each of you. So so he promises to do what's uh, legally required of him as having a job. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Okay. I will make mistakes and will work to learn from them with you guiding me along the way. I need and crave your guidance. What in the fuck? All right. Still a little more. Mm-hmm. I am all in, and I will be here to support and stir to you should you need it. I know what? I'm a little goofy, a little clumsy, but I am excited as hell. From the center of my heart, thank you. That was what he sent. Did all um, of you hire him? Like, like <laughs> does he, does he, was it like a council meeting that you all like ratified him going in? Mm-hmm. So, look, what I should feel is... It's nice to work with someone who's thoughtful, right, and so forth. What That's you know, not nice what you very, in, very yeah. enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Let me tell you how I really felt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've worked there a very long time, and yeah. just yeah. has become an old cynical man. Yeah. All I could think was, really, with this shit, 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> would this go over well with you? How well? Quick question: How often in the last couple of days has he had to stir to you? <laughs> uh, regularly. <laughs> Are you wobbling I around? Keep him? getting the apple pie shits, and I can barely make it to the toilet. <laughs> Did you hire a person or a cane? Like, what is this? <laughs> a sentient cane. What do you think of this? Would you Would you think, would your first thought be, oh, that's nice, nice guy working here? Or would you be like, what are you doing, pal? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, that email was uh, not nearly nerdy enough to have flown at my workplace. You know, that's <laughs> there needed to be like a couple more uh, Star Trek references in there, or something like that. You uh, have stoked my heart like the flames of Mordor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it did kind of sound like this guy was trying to do some sort of, you know, like, like, like we're about to go on on Lord of the Rings quest, <laughs> you know, but like he stripped out the medieval references and everything else, like. You know, instead of like, I will stir to you with my sword behind your back. It's just, I will stir to you. you know? And my axe. <laughs> <laughs> we will all carry this ring. Each of you. you know, <laughs> like. uh, hmm. No, I would. I, my eyes might fall out of my head from rolling so hard at that fucking <laughs> bullshit. Like that. <laughs> the problem is that you don't know the guy. So it just comes off right. to me as super disingenuous. Like, like, yep. who are you? Yep. And it's not like you're his boss either, I'm assuming. So it's like, like he's not Correct, like sucking that. up to you. I, I get that maybe there's like a marginal value in that. But like, so we have, that's a, <laughs> I, I, that I could respect. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. At least I get the logic, I guess. But we have mm-hmm. a guy like that at my work who's just so corny and over the top, like, that, so I think I've talked about him before. He um, he was the guy that was like chasing the guy, the waiter down to make sure he told the compliments to the chef. <laughs> yeah. right. Right. He's just right. so fucking weird and che- and I and I don't think it's disingenuous. I think he's just weird as shit. But like <laughs> this, this this is now the second week in a row that I've come into work. We go we're going in on Thursdays now, and he's like, we have like a morning manager meeting. And he's like, hey man, you okay? And I'm like, why? He's like, oh, you just look really tired and like worn down and like you don't look so good. I'm like, this is just how I fucking look. It's 730 in the morning. Don't give me shit about how I look. (laughs) I look like a bag of shit. I'm sorry, man. And so we this this time we wound up going to lunch with my boss. And he like when I'm in the office, he's desperate to have lunch with you. Like I I like having lunch with friends sometimes, but like. It, truth be told, I probably wouldn't choose him to because he is just so weird. But he'll like come by your desk and go, so when you're ready. And I'm like, I'm in a meeting. Like, let me be, right? So we end up going to lunch with me and him and our collect. We both report to the same person. And so we're like driving to this like sports bar near our um, or, like hole in the wall, like near our office. And first he starts by telling us, he's like, oh, man, it was pretty chaotic last time I went to this place. I'm like, yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, I was a lot younger, a lot better looking. And I was just sitting in the bar minding my own business. And the bartender just would not stop hitting on me. And the guy next to me got really mad about it and, like, tried to fight me outside. So they had to call the cops. And I'm like, no, they they didn't. Like, that that, didn't happen. didn't happen. (laughs) There's definitely some part of that story missing. Yeah. (laughs) Like, (laughs) very important has been skipped over. The the part where the guy that wanted to fight him was his, well, the bartender's boyfriend. (laughs) He kept hitting on the bartender. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, that, okay. He goes, no, it was really, you know, it it was really traumatizing. I'm like, well, it just sucks to be so hot. I said it real loud. I was like, like, fuck it. So we go. We go inside and we're coming after we eat and we're coming out of the place. And he looks across the street. Um, we were in Naperville and there's this place called the Naperville Skin Institute. It's like some, you know, dermatology place. Hell yeah. Oh. And like under his breath, he like looks at me and kind of mutters, but like loud enough for our boss to hear. He goes, hey. And he like stares me in the eye. He goes, they teach you how to play the skin flute there. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, our boss is right next to us. So I'm like, uh-huh. I was like, what in the fuck are you doing? So then we get back to my desk, and he pings me. He's like, 
hey, sorry if that was too off color. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Like, stop talking. I'm like, yeah, no, it's fine. I just, you know, I don't think I heard you because I played it off. He's like, yeah, no, I just once in a while, I like to make off color jokes. I'm like, I understand what you did. I'm not confused about what happened. I'm confused why you're now following up on the joke. Because it wasn't funny. (laughs) No, 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 you don't understand. Like, these types of off-color jokes are the things that handsome folks such as myself do. And you as an ugly Thursday person wouldn't understand what that's like. So I'm trying to help you out. (sighs) Then you look up from your cubicle and there's just like a... He goes running by, then there's just this team of beefcakes chasing him. (laughs) Just so fucking angry at him. I guess he's right. I don't know. I was really surprised. (laughs) So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you, Novak. That kind of, like, try-hard crap at work. It's, but you're right. It's also because you've been... I'm the same with me. Like, I've been at my job long enough. Like, I don't... I'm just, like, cynical about it, and it would not land well, I think, with me. Right. Anyone who enjoys being there can fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, what was the... I'm vi- I'm very excited, Novak, for like when this guy inevitably does something like kind of inappropriate, maybe has to send out an apology email and or resignation email. You know, that's (laughs) going to be like an epic. I've really let down everyone, each of you, by, you know, whatever. Tune in Tokyoing the other other people. (laughs) This may, may or may not surprise you, but. From hearing people who work with him, he is not good at his job. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's get to the uh, the fiber. We've got 30 grams of fiber to ingest for our daily value. And uh, this might do it if we eat all three of these. <laughs> better. <laughs> if I'm eating three things that say fiber in them, I better be covered. Let's see. How many grams of fiber in these? How many in, in I mean, one of them? Gotta be I'll lots, tell you, if, right? if I take a solid shit tomorrow, I'm going to be disappointed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> there is, on the, one, on the Supreme Brownie, it's dietary fiber is 24% of your daily value. See? That's pretty good. Yeah, but we're not even we're not even getting to the. If full I don't have a value. supreme brownie tomorrow, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to supreme brown out my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to rate them on a five point scale: a love debt, like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, and hate debt. Let's start with uh, the first one that was invented of the three: the Chewy Bar. Nine grams. <sighs> <laughs> at first i was like what the fuck yeah you i haven't was... even eaten yet i thought you're already shitting <laughs> you hit the brown note there <laughs> this thing smells fucked so what constitutes the fiber like how do they get the fiber in is it just the oats have fiber in it <laughs> how do they get the fiber into the bar <laughs> what what part of this is fiber <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the bar. I don't see the fiber in there. (laughs) It is a basically candy bar shaped item. It's got the bottom is all just oats with some chocolate chips mixed in. And then there is chocolate drizzle along the top. Geiger, you're going to start us off. What do you think of the old fiber one? Let me ask you a question first, though. So, like... Is fiber something that is notorious for making stuff taste bad? You know what I mean? Like, like we tried these like protein bars and it's like the extra protein just makes stuff taste like shit. You know, is, is fiber the same way or I don't think um, so. Right. Can you put it I in? I think stuff it has some effect. Innocuously? Yeah. Yeah. I think it has some effect, but not, not to the extent of that crazy yeah. protein. Like, I don't think this one, for example, it doesn't. It's not dried out like the protein bars. Are. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, uh, Geiger, what do you think? Oh boy. Well, I just want to say, I'm really glad to be trying this fiber bar with each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I promise, I'm going to show up and chew on this for the next thirty seconds. You're going to be a little goofy, a little clumsy, <laughs> but excited as hell. I'm going to make some. I'm going to make some big shits in the toilet. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to show uh, up to work every day. <laughs> I vow to show up and do my job. <laughs> I vow to show up at the place I'm being paid to show up at. <laughs> Probably do some of the tasks that I'm being asked to do. Because if I don't, I will no longer be around you every day. Um, I vow to only steal a little from the company coffers. <laughs> not enough that you'll notice. I do work at the Skin Institute. I forgot to tell you. Oh, you do? <laughs> Why oh. is it not called the Skin Institute? That's what I want to know. The skin. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. The Skin Insta Flute. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right <laughs> uh i don't know this is like a this is basically just like a granola bar to me um i'm reading the package and it does said it could contain almond and some things like that and i i, I the reason i checked is because i am getting a little bit of the throat feel i get when i eat almonds so I, it's kind of taking it down a little bit to me it's getting me a little I don't know what the word is, anaphylactic or reclamped or whatever. Um, <laughs> getting me a little bit dead. It's like, <laughs> it's like that when like your throat closes around like a like a skin covered flute, and like <laughs> it feels like something's just lodged in there when you're swinging by the Skin Institute. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I'll gi- I'll give it an indifferent. I think it's just like a basic bitch granola bar. But I guess if you're gonna eat a granola bar anyway, maybe this one's better because it's like slightly. Is it even healthy? I don't know. Fiber is good, but is the rest of it? It's 140 calories. I don't know if that's good or bad. I really don't pay attention to what I eat. So I, I guess I'll just say indifferent to that. I don't know. It's I- it's there. My guess is that this thing is not. Super healthy. Right. That it, yeah. <laughs> Jen? Yeah, I feel like putting that, like, fiber label on there is what they're trying to do to, to make it seem healthier than it really is. Right. Um, I I agree. that I mean, this is, like, a standard granola, but it, and it's a little too sticky for me. I don't, I don't really like the aftertaste or, honestly, the, the during taste. When I eat a bar like this, I would want, like, a stronger chocolate flavor or something like that. Uh, I'm going to slide this into dislike that. I don't think it's very good. All right. I'm going to kind of shock you guys here. Um, you like this, this is, don't you? This is the one of the th- of these three that I've had. And I do purchase it semi-regularly. Mm. Um, mm. And not just for every now and then I'll need it. Like, I think, oh, I'll get some fi- extra fiber. will be good. But I also enjoy it. Um. I think it's better than like a Quaker granola bar. Um, it is like a, a very candy barish type granola bar where it's just loaded up with like this extra chocolate yeah. uh, and stuff. And it's not healthy. Um, I'm going to, I haven't pulled one out in a couple of weeks, but I'm giving this no. a love debt. A I, what? I really like, <laughs> I really a like what? it. I very much like these bars. Come I knew that even when I bought them. This fucking thing is like a Reese's <laughs> cup to you. Come on, dude. No, Rick. <laughs> Come on, dude. Is it... So you love taking a huge shit the next day? <laughs> yes, on each of you. <laughs> dude. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we've Alrighty. got a love, an indifferent, and a, a, a dislike. Let's go to the cookie next. We'll save the Supreme Brownie for last. When you emailed us before the podcast started and said you were going to start, you were going to make some mistakes along the way. I didn't know what you meant immediately. <laughs> wow. Only so, five grams of fiber in this. It's a pretty, I don't know, sizable cookie, but just looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Um, and it does seem feels when you feel it it's like soft in a really fake kind of way yeah yep hmm this motherfucker is a bit drier <laughs> <laughs> sam l jackson just tried some of the snacks for us here. <laughs> this motherfucker dry uh, that's my sam l right. jackson what do you think <laughs> pretty good hey, hey, <laughs> spot plus. on Chad, you're first with the cookie. Um, wow, this thing tastes very stale to me. Um, I think this is a problem that pay- plagues a lot of 
prepackaged chocolate chip cookies for me. You know, especially ones that are more on the chewy side. Like it's it's really hard to get that texture and consistency right. Just because I, you know, it's inevitable to compare it to a home baked, cho- you know, a fresh baked chocolate chip cookie or whatever. I know it's not the same thing, but but you still just your brain compares it. You can't can't help but judge the one against the other. This is really really hurt by that comparison. I think. Um, I don't like this at all. Um, this is worse than a bar for me for sure, but it's not, it's not going into hate that territory, but this is a very, very strong dislike that. And it's a bad cookie. Wow. It's not a great cookie. I actually can't think of a cookie that I like that's made like in a single serve. Like when you get these, uh, like a grandma's cookie, that type of just yeah. one in a package type of cookie. I can't think of a single one I like. Some of the grandma's flavors are all right. Yeah, there's there's definitely certain flavors that I think lend. Like a peanut butter cookie, harder to fuck yeah. up. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, chocolate chip cookies should be easy. I'm sure whatever fiber they're throwing in is throwing off the taste a little. It still has a chocolate chip cookie taste. Where's the fiber? I still don't know. <laughs> what part of it is it the cookie part? I can't find the fucking fiber. <laughs> what color is um, it? It's not awful tasting. It's just very generic. Like not a great chocolate chip cookie. <sighs> I'm kind of in between a dislike and an indifferent. I actually think I'm just going to end up kind of with the lower and different to that. Um, Geiger, how are you feeling? Yeah, it just kind of, it's your standard generic cookie, right? It's your, like, like you said, your grandma's, your famous Amos, your, like, it reminds me if you ever go to, like, the grocery store and just get, like, like the bakery, you'll have that little bag of, like, generic jewel brand cookies or whatever. Oh, or, those like, are our, good. Yeah, to me, they're kind of the same. I don't know. So um, it's just kind of like it's like Chad said, it's that weird or maybe Novak. I don't remember who said it, but like that fake soft chew. It's not like a soft batch chew. It's like a fake soft chew. That It's fine. I don't know. It's just very bland. I can't get it too worked up about it. I mean, it's not good. Um, let me see. I should give it a rating. Uh, how about indifferent to that? I, it's just right. kind of there. I don't know. Both of these snacks are just there. And until I can find the fiber, I can't. They really are there. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I actually kind of, you know, what, when you said like a generic uh, jewel cookie that's a grocery store by us, it reminds me actually when you buy the Costco cookies and yep. they're in like a 12 like pack yeah. with like four, they're, they're like sit diagonally. Mm. Yeah. Um, those are just never that great. Right. Mm. Right. So it's, I was... this is. Those are better than this, but still not good. I was actually going to cite the, the the Costco chocolate chip cookies as a, as an example of like a store bought one you can get that I do think is good actually. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I twelve cookies is too much to fucking eat for for me, you know, or however many come in that pack twenty four. Wait, or whatever. what? This They're is Mister. I ate a sleeve of cookies. Oreos. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't hear this shit. <laughs> you, you, what's but, bigger, uh, twelve cookies or five foot long hot dogs in the Oakland A's game? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll say about about cookies because I I love chocolate chip cookies. I don't know when chocolate chunk cookie became as popular. I don't think it's worse. Always, it's worse. I've never. Yeah. If I like was finding a top ten cookie, chocolate chunk would be nowhere near that. Because it's not. Worst. There's not enough chocolate spread around. It's like these pockets <laughs> yeah. of chocolate then. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a strict downgrade, and for some reason the chunks always taste worse. Like either they don't bake all the way through enough or whatever. Yeah. All right. All right. So it's segment time. Everyone's favorite time of the podcast. <sighs> oh God, what's he gonna do now? <laughs> segment, <laughs> segment, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Stop all right. The segment, yeah. <laughs> I right, just love doing <laughs> crowd cheering noise of. <sighs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, you're in luck. The segment. <laughs> the segment is just us making crowd cheering noises for half an hour. Stop eating the snacks. <laughs> <just> the segment. <laughs> <laughs> and different than that, who gives a fuck? 
<laughs> um, all right. So we're here to talk about myths, right? Ah, so there's a <laughs> <gasps> there's a famous uh, website, Snopes.com, who is there to help us debunk myths. So I wanted oh, to look yeah. up some of the, the the either more famous or more goofy or whatever myths that have been asked to Snopes and other places. And uh, I think what we're going to do is this, because I think you guys will probably agree in a lot of this if I just say, hey, do you think this is true or false? So we're going to rotate. I'll start with one of you. I'll let you pick uh, if you think it's true or false. And then the other one has to take the opposite position no matter what and tell me why it's opposite. I think we, I, okay. one of you did that before, and I think it, it yeah. worked well. I'm going to steal it from you. All right. So let me pull up this Word doc. I actually prepared. That's true. Right. Geiger stole a segment idea. <laughs> I, uh, Snopes.com. Did Geiger <laughs> in his segment? Oh, he did a segment. Um, all right. Uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to get the first? Uh, Chad, I'll let you choose first on this one. How's that? All right. I want to go second with list A. Okay. Novak, you um, choose first. first list B. Yeah. There's, okay. uh, uh, hey, there's one list. Um, <laughs> all right. True or false? The top crayon maker at Crayola until his retirement in 1990, Emerson Moser, is actually colorblind. True or false, according to Snopes. The top crayon maker? Yeah, he was like, like the head he, of He the... designs all the colors and stuff? Yeah, they, they didn't specify. Or he's like, like, like the best guy on the factory line. <laughs> <laughs> he was just jamming out crayons left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Look at this guy. Um, look at that guy go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's hand making a thousand crayons a minute. He's, he's got like those pottery wheels like the guy from Ghost. He's just rolling it in his hands. <laughs> A thousand crayons a minute? <laughs> I make that up. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's like Wait, a realistic fucking number. It seems <laughs> unlikely, okay? <laughs> so so Novak, Novak has to decide if he thinks that's true or false, and then I have to argue why he's wrong? Yeah, that's right. All right. Sure. Um, it, it, <laughs> it would <laughs> Some of the arguments reason, might be short. <laughs> it would seem to reason that a guy who designs the crayon colors would be able to see the crane colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I would think. So it also seems like a really stupid fucking like rumor to start. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're gonna if you don't like that one, we're in for a bumpy segment. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say he's not colorblind. Okay. Chad? Okay. I I actually would have guessed that he is colorblind. Let me explain why I have uh, first of all, colorblind could be like just limited to red green. So maybe he like only doesn't do that, right? He makes like the best fucking blues you've ever seen. But like <laughs> he sticks, you know, he stays in his lane. They have other people do the red and green, but he's got like blue, purple, fucking orange, like you wouldn't believe, you know. Plus, like <clears throat> we've seen it in history where like, you know, the best the best symphonies. Oh yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> The, the best classical uh, symphonies. Orange like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> My boy Moser, he's got fucking orange like you wouldn't fucking believe, bruh. <laughs> um, he comes in and he says, I look forward to making these oranges, each of them. Um, so, but like we've seen it in history where like the best classical symphonies were all composed by like deaf dudes or whatever. Right. Didn't that happen? We've and, seen like, that. Okay. Yeah, Beethoven, Mozart, weren't they like all deaf and blind and stupid? I forget. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'm the stupid one. But uh, at least one of them was deaf, right? Top crayon maker, Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that I think it's true. Right. Chad, you actually nailed it exactly. He is. He was colorblind. He was blue, he, I, green, colorblind. I wow. nailed so it you, that he has the best oranges, or no? You know, well, maybe you you <laughs> you nailed it that he has a specific color blindness that doesn't cut him off from the entire spectrum. It was just blue and green that he had he couldn't differentiate between. Right. Um, so. I don't. I don't think like I, I think it's actually really rare to like see in black and white. You know what I mean? Like, like almost all color blindness is just like you get fucked up by two colors, basically. So can he see like a? types of blues that we can only dream of <laughs> <laughs> i mean he sees 
gray or whatever and thinks it's blue. We don't, I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is like, but yeah. I actually, but, uh, I actually had, um, I had a friend, um, back when I first graduated from college, a buddy of mine who I worked with and he was like pretty severely red, green colorblind where like you would just show him a, say you just showed him in a vacuum, like a piece of paper, like this, is a green piece of paper. He couldn't tell you if it was red or green, um, without some other visual context cues. And, and like, I never really thought too much about it, but like one time we were driving around town and he was driving and it was like pretty late at night. So there wasn't really any other cars on the road and there was a stoplight <laughs> up ahead. And he goes, Hey, could you tell me if that stoplight is red or green right now? And I'm well, like, that's impossible. Yeah. I'm like, Hmm. Uh, well, it's green. So it's good that you're about to like blow right through it. And he told me that like, he couldn't tell the difference between stoplights from a distance at night, like he would, he would either have to look at like their position, you know, or yeah, just isn't yeah. always the top one. All, like if you can tell the top light, yeah, but if you're far enough yeah. away and it's nighttime and you can't see right. the outline of the actual thing. And then, so then he would have to rely on other cars, but there was no other cars around. So he's like, yeah, sometimes I probably just blow red lights. I'm like, I'm really yeah. glad that I'm riding in the car with you right now. That's fantastic. <laughs> right. I guess I do <laughs> wonder what it does look like. Is it just gray or like, is it just, you know, like brown or like it has to look like something because it has to be the same. So uh, it's like he can tell it's he can tell there's a light, so it has to have some sort of shade to it. Yeah, the two colors just look the same for whatever yeah. that means. This yeah. is my question is if you're completely colorblind, can you still get yeah. blue balls? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question. How good was Mozart at the skin flute? <laughs> 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 so, so Emerson Mosler was, was famous for telling women not to give him green balls, and he would go, "I don't know. I, it looked the same to me." Uh, Moser, Mos- a- Mozart, are they related? <laughs> yeah, they have different last names, but they're very related. <laughs> Mozart just had like this row of like he had like the row of violins, row of violas, then just a row of just people sucking cack. Like, <laughs> but he was, he couldn't hear anything. So he had no idea that they weren't making music. <laughs> I mean, they were making French a kind horns of music. blow louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The music was, a, was a lot of slurping and moaning, but it was a musical in a way. What instrument is this? Ah, the skin flute. Uh, all right, Chad, you get to go first in this one. Cool. So this this is a pretty commonly held belief that they that someone still had to ask Snopes about. Mm-hmm. Um, doctors historically have recommended eight glasses of water per day. You've probably heard that before. You should drink yes. eight glasses of water a day. True or false? They asked Snopes. Oh man, the glass is I, there is some amount that I don't know if eight 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 seems high because like a glass. I think it's like you're supposed to drink like thirty two ounces a day. Is that eight glasses? I don't fucking know. Um, I don't so I'm going to say that that's false. All right, Novak, now you why have to come up with a, a reason why it's true. Well, I mean, people are regularly dehydrated, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think doctors probably said, let's pick just a fucking number and we'll all run with it. Right? There was an. <laughs> all, there was an I'll all back of, you up, bro. <laughs> there was an all doctors email that went out. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. All eight glasses. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to come and do my job, which is to decide on exactly eight glasses of water a day. Let's all run with that. So, yes, they they just decided that it was good. Okay. The answer is it is false. Um, and the reason why is that it basically, the, the doctors basically say it differs per person, right? Really what you need to do sure. is replace the water you lost that day. So if you ran a marathon, you should drink more water because you sweated more out. If you sat on right. your couch, you know, sucking skin flute, you should probably, you're probably <laughs> fine. I doubt you exerted sucking any- skin flute. <laughs> Take a little <laughs> bit of the ambiguousness. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sorry. I, uh, making melodic harmonies with the skin flute. <laughs> You play the skin flute. <laughs> you do? Is there fingering? You don't suck the skin flute. <laughs> oh, I thought. I might, I gotta yeah. be honest, guys. I maybe I'm in the wrong. I thought that just meant sucking a person's dick. Is that not? <laughs> is that not what skin flute is? Is there a flute I mean, made of actual? 
Yeah. A little, so I, little column A, little column so what, B. So <laughs> what you're doing is you run a marathon, uh-huh. you take your shirt off, yeah. squeeze it out, and then just figure, out, figure out how much water you need. Yeah. You drink oh, – well, you if you just drink that sweat, and you replace – literally replacing the water mm-hmm. that you lost. Yeah. Okay. So – I guess that's probably true for like uggos like you, Geiger. But what about handsome folk like myself? Do I need to drink more water? You go to a bar and you have to look. Sta- you just stare straight at the floor. Do not make eye contact with the bartender because inevitably you will make everyone else in the bar jealous. My uh, uh, my brother David swears that you know since he moved out to Denver, he started drinking a lot more water, and he swears that because of the altitude you get dehydrated yeah. more quickly. And so everybody, he says like everybody in Denver drinks like a gallon of water a day or something like that. They're just constantly. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. They, have, they have that on Snopes at all. Uh, hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, great. Snopes, 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 Snopey, Snopes. Does Snopes have anything about your friend who was at the bar? <laughs> so he's just talking to the bar. The bartender's hitting on him. Yeah. And some other guy is just fucking pissed. Yeah, that this woman would be hitting on a guy. How dare you hit on another patron? Do your job. You're supposed to be. You're. You came here. You're supposed to be doing the bare minimum of work, which is serve drinks, not hit on patrons. All right, Novak, you're heading this one up. Number three, we got to probably pick up the pace. Um, <laughs> is the word now? The Oxford Dictionary often adds slang terms every year. Sure. Do you think the word twerk is in the dictionary? That's on Snopes. Like, can't you just fucking check that out? The people <laughs> are lazy. It's much easier to formally request something at Snopes than it is to read a I book. I need to know if something's in the dictionary. I'll go to Snopes to find out <laughs> rather than dictionary.com. Um, I need I to know it, if this restaurant it, has a reservation. I'll probably just go to Snopes rather than call them. <laughs> now, they are always putting new words in. Yeah. I know sometimes it takes a while and maybe twerk is newer and hasn't been put in Uh um like i know they put they recently put dough in there like d apostrophe oh like the homer like dictionary right yeah um but i think twerk has been out long enough i'll say i guess i'll say it's in there chad why are you you totally against this innocuous fact (laughs) i i actually i actually don't think i think i think novak's right they're like so far behind on getting stuff like they probably don't even have skeet in there yet you know what I mean? So, like, how are they going to have twerk? They don't have commonly established vernacular like ski. <laughs> you, you can't have twerk without ski. Everybody knows this. <laughs> Verb to masturbate and throw it all around the room. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Yeah. Um, every, every good twerk leads to a skeet. So. <laughs> The answer is true. It is in the dictionary. So it's got two mm-hmm. different, it's got a verb and a noun. Uh, dance to popular music in a sexually provocative manner involving thrusting hip movements and a low squatting stance. That's the verb. <laughs> and the noun is a dance or dance move involving thrusting hip movements and a low squatting stance. <laughs> Hell yeah. You really got to get in that. You got to get your arms akimbo, right? You got to get mm-hmm. all squatty. You gotta pop that ass. All right, that part so wasn't Mozart it. used to have <laughs> accompanying his music. <laughs> Let me see a twerk, 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 twerk. The Ninth <laughs> Symphony. Um, all right, Chad, you're up. Mm-hmm. A NASA scientist, true or false? A NASA scientist warned astronauts against masturbating <laughs> in space because they could accidentally impregnate multiple women at once. <laughs> 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 who the other astronauts <laughs> no, all the women floating around in zero g with their vaginas open no he's, he's talking about the the women on earth as cum just rains down from the heavens <laughs> <laughs> meteor showers of cum <laughs> when you wish upon a star and the falling star is just nuts in your eye um <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Haley's Common is just a, like a collection of astronaut <laughs> load that just comes around the Earth every now and then. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin's jizz. 
Um, all right. So <clears throat> I, I guess this is actually kind of tricky because it's not about, is this actually possible? Because it is a hundred percent not possible, <laughs> but whether a scientist <laughs> warned somebody about yeah, that right. is a whole other question. Um, that does seem like something like a, 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 a weird scientist might <laughs> warn somebody about no, there's no fucking way that's true. No way. Novak? All right, here's why it's true. Um, <laughs> when they went up into space, oh, oh, they went all up. the women <laughs> all the women came back pregnant, right? And right. so they couldn't they couldn't understand why. And it turns out uh, Buzz Aldrin fucks. <laughs> but <laughs> he did not he didn't want to let that out. Right, that he was getting around. So right. he said that he just let his sperm loose into uh, the cabin, and that the women ended up pregnant that way. <laughs> and since it being the time it was, the scientists <laughs> believed him. It's funny the corollary uh, legend to this or myth on Snopes is that the moon landing picture had to be faked because the original one was Buzz Aldrin getting head on the moon right next to the flare. <laughs> <laughs> um this is false obviously <laughs> um it is funny yeah. the new york post actually ran an article headlined astronauts should not masturbate in zero gravity nasa scientists say the daily star said said astronauts warn not to masturbate in space as one session can impregnate three women the reason this happened is on july 21st Conan O'Brien's podcast had a NASA engineer on it and they made a joke about it and people clicked like clipped the quote and basically saying like have you ever like they, they this NASA engineer talked about the things they sent up to the shuttle and Conan asked if they ever sent porn up there and uh the guy said no and he's like oh yeah because if you jacked off you could get all the women pregnant in the ship or whatever and he's like no that's not what happens and they literally cut that out and acted like it was a real fact so they cut uh, out the Conan quote. Yeah, so Conan <laughs> O'Brien put that out in the in the atmosphere. Wow. Literally. Well, I bet this like there's got to be like a 37 pages on Snopes about things that are going to happen in the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so so that's I mean that's okay. So that's clearly not true, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it is true that before Buzz Aldrin went into space, Saturn didn't have rings. <laughs> <laughs> now it does. He put, he put a, ring, a on ring on it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he proposed to Saturn. Yeah. All right, number five. We got ten of these, so we got to start picking it up here. All right. Um, again, Chad. Mm. Commonly held medical thing that you've heard doctors say before that we yeah, a lot of movies have been premised on this. A lot of TV shows have been premised on this. The fact that we only actually use ten percent of our brain. Mm. Is that true or false? Uh, I think I have read before that that is false. So now no. I have to say that we use exactly 10% of our no. brain. No, no, you have to tell us why we use barely any of that big old brain. I mean, it, it just look be... at human behavior and you might think like, <laughs> well, yeah, we live in a country of fuckwits. We must. Yeah, I mean, most of the brain is just, uh, you know, empty, <laughs> empty space. <laughs> it's just there for show. So. <laughs> Check out my big brain. So, yeah, nothing in it. We're only using ten percent of it. Um, yeah, no, Novak, you fucking idiot. You're wrong. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it is false. So obviously, scientists have said they've done brain imaging and all that, and um, most of the brain is used all the time. It depends on what different tasks that you're performing at the time. Um, but even when you do a very simple action, a lot of our brain is used. Uh, during that, um, even when you're resting or sleeping, it varies from person to person. Some people like Einstein probably used all of the brain all the time. Some people like, right. I don't know, Buzz Aldrin when he's getting dull on the moon, probably yeah. didn't use th that much right. at the time. So it takes 97% of the brain to play the skin flute. Everyone knows. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a highly intellectual <laughs> pursuit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. Novak, you're up first. <laughs> So there's a South Carolina university named Furman, Furman, right? And the the name of their uh, sports teams is Furman, Fur Furman. <laughs> no, no yeah. the Furman, Furman. Uh, sorry, my brain just short circuited. 
Um, I tried to use 11%. It fucked, it, it <laughs> fucked me up. Uh, so uh, their sports teams are known as the Furman Paladins. Um, mm. But the rumor that was asked to Snopes is that they used to be called the Furman University Christian Knights, but they had to change that because that spells fuck. Mm. Is that a true uh, true thing? Um, no, I don't think people, I don't think these schools usually abbreviate their entire name with the mascot <laughs> letters <laughs> as part of it to where that would ever really have spelled fuck at any point. So I think that's, that is false. Okay. Hmm. Chad. I think it is true that Furman University Christian Knights spells fuck. Uh, <laughs> yep yep okay chad you're on to something there we're both right. uh, uh, <laughs> everyone's right no uh that is false it's actually kind of uh attributed to being like a common joke uh another version of the joke is that sam houston university used to be called the sam houston institute of technology or mm, shit mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. <laughs> number seven chad um yeah. So, you know, Pez dispensers, right? They've come out with all these different characters and all that. Batman, Spider-Man, yeah. you name it. Um, of was Betsy Ross, the woman who invented the American flag? <clears throat> the, uh, invented or no, the well, player. she created the, she made the first American flag. Sorry. Uh-huh. She invented the concept of flags. Uh, was she the only actual person that was ever made into a Pez dispenser? The only actual person, like what? the only like actual person that they made a Pez dispenser of, like what like she like died Spider- and they turned her body into a bunch of Pez dispensers. <laughs> no, or? like Spider Man is not a real person, <laughs> is what I mean. So like, yeah, yeah the yeah, only yeah. actually factually based human being that ever, existed. or as of like a certain year, ever. Uh, it's a commonly held urban legend. You guys haven't heard that one. I like <laughs> if. <laughs> Yeah, like, why would you, if you're going to make a Betsy Ross, you might as well make, like, a whole historical figures, you know, like a Harriet mm-hmm. Tubman Pez and, like, George Washington Pez. You know, you might as well, like, go all out with that. Um, so By making three? Yeah. Yeah, those three, <laughs> and then you can stop. <laughs> okay. Washington, Tubman, and Ross. Trifecta. The trifecta of Pez. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need, baby. <laughs> I, I'd actually, uh, I'd be surprised they even made a Betsy Ross one. So I, there's lots of reasons here to say that that's false. Okay. Novak, why is he wrong? Okay, it's it's true. They made Betsy the Betsy Ross Pez, and then they made a uh, beta version of the Buzz Aldrin Pez. But as soon as someone opened the neck, a bunch of women became pregnant. <laughs> a bunch of jizz shot out. <laughs> Zero G jizz. This, this Pez rains come from the heavens. Right. Says that the Pez, instead of opening his head and this Pez shoots out, you open his crotch and the Pez sticks out. Um, so this is false. Um, not because they didn't make Betsy Ross. They did. But she was one of several actual humans. That Tubman and sure. Washington, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Tubman and Washington, that's it. No, Elvis, uh, Mozart, who you were mentioning yeah. before. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, various presidents, Paul Revere. The crayon uh, guy. The crayon guy. His are all blue-green, ironically enough. Um, yeah, all of them. All right, number eight. Novak. This yes. was the most search myth on Snopes of 2021. This is the thing that the most people wanted to know. Novak, what I need to know from you is, did President Joe Biden crap his pants while visiting the Pope in Rome? (laughs) Did he pop out the dookie in his presidential briefs? Go. Uh, (laughs) Was this a recent visit? Did he he go there this year? I don't, I have no idea. Well, it was the most search myth of 2021, so I doubt it. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you don't think you would have heard about that if he browned out his shorts while talking to the Pope? I mean, maybe he like sharded or something, but I don't know what. <laughs> You know how they do that white smoke when they like to do Pope? They had a bunch of brown smoke coming out of the Vatican from his burning shit. 
I mean, we do know it has it has been in the media lately about Biden's new high fiber diet. So it is totally <laughs> possible that he uh, that he did he that. Wanted to, once he was elected president of America, he had no choice but to just eat apple pie after <laughs> apple pie. He renamed Air Force One Fiber One. He just kept <laughs> those fucking ass. Uh, so this is obviously false. Yeah. Um, hashtags oh. such as. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, oh, oh, did, oh, oh! Did you not give your answer? Yeah, hashtags such as, didn't even go. Oh, sorry. I thought. Oh, I thought you. That was your answer. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. That uh, was my answer. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, hashtags such as uh, "poopy pants Biden" <laughs> and "poopgate" started circling on social media along with memes based on the unsubstantiated claim that the commander in chief had a bathroom accident during his trip. So, how come, uh, yeah, how come, like, we can't just have like all the con- you know, like, there's all these like conspiracy theories that are like very bad for many reasons. Like, mm-hmm. how come all the QAnon theories or whatever can't just be like, did he shit his pants? <laughs> like, <laughs> wouldn't the world be just a better place if that was all right. conspiracy theories? <laughs> did QAnon shaman shit in his buffalo head and walk around with the <laughs> January 6th in the Capitol with it <laughs> resting on his skull? All right, uh, Chad, yeah. I really need to know. Can you answer this for me? Were the blue people of Kentucky real? (laughs) The fuck? (laughs) So, for years, people have held this legend that Mm -hmm. there is, and there is pictures supposedly from like the 1800s about a family in Kentucky who had blue skin. Mm. So, people wrote into Snopes to say, is this real? Is this doctored? What do you think? Is this Crayon guy who only sees blue? (laughs) (laughs) He looked just gray to to Emerson Moser. But was this the the first um, location for the Blue Man Group? They started in Kentucky. <laughs> yes, that's yes. It was a... people just <laughs> didn't understand their act yet. <laughs> well, we are already freaks. We might as well learn to play drums. <laughs> <laughs> they were a little ahead of their time. I think it's what it was. <laughs> Give me some paint and some drums. Let's figure the fucking shit out. <laughs> you're gonna come gawk at us. You're gonna have to pay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Okay, so I feel like that is false. Okay, Novak? Um, so the blue people of Kentucky yeah. <laughs> are real. <laughs> Novak sounding fucking high over there. <laughs> uh, um, wh- why? Yeah, so. <laughs> I told you it was the crayon guy. Okay. Well, it, it's surprisingly, Novak, you're actually correct. So um, wow. this is a family called the Blue Fugits. Well, that's what they were called. Their last name is Fugit. Uh, they've been actually very well documented. They carried a rare blood disorder called methemoglobinemia, mm-hmm. or probably not actually called that, but however it's actually said, uh, mm-hmm. which affects how the blood carries and releases oxygen. So in the Fugits, it didn't harm their physical health, uh, but it did cause their skin to turn blue as a result of their blood cells carrying less oxygen. So oxygenated blood is bright red, and it, 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 I'm quoting this: oxygenated it, oxygenated blood is bright red, and in some white people, gives skin a pink undertone. So um, mm. apparently, they had too much blue blood, and it I is heard also... it was because the skin flute was outlawed, and they were the blue balls people of Kentucky. <laughs> well, you're not entirely wrong. Uh, it, they 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 attribute a lot of it to <laughs> <They're> not <laughs> well. They attribute a lot Which of it part to- of that that I just said is true. <laughs> they said you could transmit it by blowing a dude. Uh, no, it's uh, a lot of it was attributed by uh, to inbreeding uh, because it's a recessive gene, and so both parties had. Yeah, to that's have what it. I was getting. Oh, at. So that's what yeah, you're getting. So at. They definitely were not blue balls <laughs> if they were inbreeding. All right, last one. We'll wrap this up now. I chose this one. This is. I'm going to warn you. This one's a little dark. But I chose this one because I had always heard this as a kid growing up, and I had several friends swear this is true and tried to show oh, me. Boy. You're about no, to no, bring, no! Bring down the mood here. No, no. glad <laughs> we could end on a on an upper. Uh, um, okay, so his uh, this is an urban legend that's existed for a long time. You might have heard it mm-hmm. that uh, there's a scene in The Wizard of Oz when you watch oh, yeah, The Wizard yeah. of Oz. You've heard this one. Mm-hmm. So right okay. after person hanging. Yes. So uh, right after the 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 
four or five people encounter the the witch for the first time and she disappears. They walk down the yellow brick road and in the back there's <laughs> four a- or five people. <laughs> <laughs> One person and a bunch of creatures, but okay. <laughs> I think it was uh, Frodo and <laughs> Kevin, Joe, Joe Biden. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're off to see the bathroom. I just took a load in my pants. Uh, so, so if you, uh, they all start walking down the yellow brick road. And there's two tree, the, like it's tree lined road. And if you look in the far distance, supposedly you can see something swinging. And the backstory is that um, one of the Munchkin actors hung himself because of uh, unrequited love. He was in love with someone who didn't love him, and then he hung himself. So, um, Novak, I think this is you, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> um, cool. Now, I know they had editing <laughs> materials back then. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> That's correct. They and... have to release all footage exactly <laughs> as shot. No choice. I think a, you know, swinging corpse <laughs> might be noticed <laughs> and might have been... Uh, been left on the uh, uh, cutting room floor. Okay. So I'm thinking that uh, it's not true. Interesting take. Okay. Okay. Chad? Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he's disrespectful here. All right. <laughs> yeah. That was a character in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't have to get into detail. Just say it's true and we'll move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, as anybody that the working conditions back then were tough. And uh, yeah, it's true. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you're actually not. <laughs> uh, you're not actually wrong about that. So it is false. Uh, now, now there has been no good explanation given, apparently. So. If you look at like if you I, apparently they've cleaned up the versions because so many people were talking about it. So if you watch it now on like TV, <laughs> yeah, apparently or, you can't see so it. many people. People are talking. We got to start <laughs> cleaning up every version out there. Go <laughs> go to that dude's home. Get <laughs> <laughs> bust down those doors. Get those versions. <laughs> Men in black, those people, so they forget what they saw. (laughs) Clean up the versions. (laughs) (laughs) Too many rogue copies of Munchkin Suicide. All right. Um, But so some of it has been attributed to like it was a piece of equipment. One person Mm -hmm. said it was a crane, like the bird that they had put some birds in the background to make it seem like there was animals in the forest. And one of them had um, unrequited love and hung itself. <laughs> <laughs> it fell in love with a fellow crane. Um, <laughs> and also someone stated that the Munchkins weren't actually on set until after that scene was filmed. Um, but mm. I did. it did take me down this rabbit hole of like... <laughs> Of like, <laughs> there were no munchkins on set that day. <laughs> no living ones, anyways. <laughs> you didn't see a munchkin. Well, let me ask you one more, since you're like expert of Snopes. Yeah, is the conspiracy true that chemtrails are actually Joe Biden shit shit trails <laughs> as he flies across the sky in fiber one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Joe okay. Biden constantly crisscrossing the globe, shitting constantly. Is it also true that Joe Biden's shit can melt steel beams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's eat the brownies. We got to eat a brownie. All right. It's the Fiber One Supreme Brownie, and it's cookie dough flavored. So it's not only a brownie, it's a cookie dough flavored brownie with a little fiber. See if you can find the fiber. <laughs> I'm looking for it. I don't smell it. All right. It's basically a uh, small-ish square with the bottom looks all fudgy. The top has like a lighter colored layer of something of cookie dough, I suppose. Uh, Then there's some mini chips and some chocolate drizzle. (laughs) (laughs) This just tastes like the cookie to me. It It almost tastes exactly the same. It does taste a lot like the cookie. <laughs> Too much fiber? Feel yeah. the runs? <laughs> mm. 
my butt's about to impregnate every toilet in space. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Chad really, <laughs> really thrown off by this brownie. Um, it's not. It's not a good brownie. Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if it's worse than the cookie. It just tastes a lot like the cookie, like Geiger said. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. I I don't get where the cookie dough flavor is in here at all. I don't taste that. I do. I think that the one nice touch here is the little chocolate chips. I think they're kind of a nice addition. Mm-hmm. Um. But they cannot save this brownie. I just think it's too close to the cookie for me to go too far away from it. It's not great, but I was really hungry. I could eat this. Uh, I'm just going to go another indifferent to that for this 501 brownie. Uh, For me, the bar is head and tails above uh, these other products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're where you at. I wonder to agree with your last statement. I think this is right in line with the other products in that I'm giving it another, my third straight and different. I just, I've yet to be moved by any of these. I'm like my bowels, which tomorrow will probably be moved quite often uh, due to all the fiber intake. But these are just, um, it just tastes like the cookie. It tastes exactly like the cookie. Uh, It's a different texture. I get the smaller, I think you're right in that the smaller chocolate chips are like an improvement. I guess I'd rather eat this than the cookie. But I don't get what the cookie dough layer was supposed to do or supposed to taste like. The br- It doesn't taste like a brownie. It just tastes like sugar. That's all it tastes like. It doesn't have a distinct flavor of its own, just like the cookie. So this is going to be my third straight down the middle and different. It's just kind of a food that's there and it's not offensive, but it's not good. So there we go. Chad, I'd send this thing to hell, I guess. Did you find the, uh, wait, did you find the fiber? It's at the like back lower left. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me go back and lick that. <laughs> give you a map to the fiber. I appreciate that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> back a little left. <laughs> it's back got a little thing that says, you are here, and then it like shows you where to, how to find the fiber. There's a rumor that if you watch the Fiber One Brownie commercial, you can see the fibers swinging from a tree in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually read uh, <laughs> earlier today, this is true. That, that Fiber One has some commercial from like six or seven years ago where it's like a guy and you think like the guy is pregnant, but then like at the end, it's just because he's like really constipated and he like takes a shit and like it makes like labor pain sounds and stuff. And is then this like another Snopes thing or is this? True? No, this it's like a true story. Like this was like a Fiber One commercial like six or seven years ago of like guy pretending to be pregnant. It has like a baby belly and then goes to the bathroom and comes out and he's like all flat stomached and he just took like a baby sized shit or whatever. Whoa. It's like need some more Whoa. fiber. Fiber One. It's like, all right, great. <laughs> Eat this Thanks. and make you shit. <laughs> um, just channeling colon blow completely. <laughs> yeah. um, wait, before Chad goes, let's uh, set up the scenario here. We've got uh, yeah. two indifference. Now, if Chad gives this thing a like, uh, it is going to tie for the win. Mm-hmm. But uh, due to the really disgusted face he made, uh, I don't think that's probably going to happen, Chad. Well, uh, Novak did make a good point. The, the, the mini chocolate chips are pretty, actually, c- kind of tasty. Um they they are the only redeeming thing about this product. Um, you have all the negative parts of the cookie, like a bad cookie flavor, and like kind of like this like attempt at cookie dough that the cookie dough layer is so thin that it just like it's yeah. barely there, but just enough to get me that like bad taste. Um, and then a complete and utter failure of a brownie underneath it. That is like at at times moist, but other times drying in like a weird way. Like as you chew further, it just gets like it just flips from moist to dry. Um, it's it's truly bizarre. Uh, it's like if a woman was there and like <laughs> Ryan Reynolds was in the room and then I came into the room just from moist to dry <laughs> immediately. Um, 
<laughs> but you would immediately try to fight Ryan Reynolds, right? Because you were so mad about the situation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I to, the chocolate chips are not enough to save this for me. I think this is really, really, really disgusting. I'm going to give it a hate debt. Wow. Hmm. All right. Well, the winner uh, on the back of my uh, love for it was the chewy bar. And I will continue to eat them. I, I think it's you... easily the best of the day. Easily. Like yeah. I probably should like rechange my score to an indifferent. It's so much better than these other two. So but we are one. saying that if you uh, need fiber in your diet and you really want to purchase a fiber one product, you, you're better off with that uh, chewy bar than these other ones. Yeah. Jagger, where can the listeners contact us? Uh, if you uh, want to talk, if you want to ask us any myths, rather than just like look up in the encyclopedia or anything like, just come to us and then we'll post it on Snopes and then wait like a couple months and we'll talk about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've ever gotten in a bar fight because women just found you so irresistible, um, if you ever sent a company wide email sucking up to 300 people at once, uh, let us know. Um, but if you also wanted to ask a question to the mailbag, suggest a snack, tell us what you thought of our ratings, all of that good stuff, you can get us at you tried it at gmail.com. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram. You can find us hashtag uh, you tried it on Twitter. We have you tried that group on um, Facebook. And, uh, you know, if you do like the podcast, please leave us a review or some stars or whatever. And uh, let your friends and family know. Uh, we would appreciate that very much. And as always, we do very much appreciate uh, those of you that do listen. So thank you for that. All right. Uh, we're going to call it, but this is ep full length ep 199. Wow. And uh, big deal, big round number. Uh, next episode. So <laughs> <laughs> tune in. We're going to have a special guest and tune in 200. <laughs> That's right. It's going to do it for this time. We'll be back next time. We're trying out three brand new snacks. This is. Yep. Yeah.